And he says in verse 16, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it, saith the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth from Jerusalem. goes on to say, Cry yet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion, and shall yet choose Jerusalem. Yes, God was ready to set the work forth. And in verse 2, He sends a man out with a measuring line to measure Jerusalem. And this is how the Lord starts His work. Everything is always measured first. He measures a man, He measures a city, He measures a temple, all in the great architecture of planning and making ready His work. Because God is a planner. God is not a God of confusion. He's organized. God sits down. He makes ready each step, each event that has to take place in the construction of His temple. And He sends forth His angels and those of His heavenly host to do these works. He goes on to say, after verse 1 and 2, they measured the city. He says in verse 4, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I say that the Lord will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. God even promises that he's going to dwell in Jerusalem among his people. This must be a great encouragement to those who had started the work and now through discouragement had stopped. That God was going to protect them, He would be a wall of fire, and that He would in fact dwell amongst His people. Speaking of a great future. He tells them in verse 6 to come forth from the north. Because Israel had been spread abroad through all the lands and He's now calling His people back calling His people from the world, calling them from whatever work and whatever labor they were busy at. You can imagine people living in the north, shoemakers and uh, millwrights and blacksmiths, jewelers and men and women of all, farmers in different occupations, and they would pick up and leave and come to the house of God. Leave it, all that behind and come to build His temple. Verse 11, And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto thee, and the Lord shall inherit Judah's portion, and the Holy Land shall choose Jerusalem again. God here promising that all nations would come unto Him. A great future. Verse 1, chapter 3. And He showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at His right hand to resist Him. This is the same Joshua mentioned in Ezra. Here he is, he's the high priest. And Joshua and Zerubbabel were the ones who had led the completion of the foundation. And God knew the desire of their hearts. But he knew that Satan would stand to resist. And here he was, right at the right side of Joshua there. Resisting and resisting and resisting him. Can you imagine with Satan holding us back like that? How much it must take just to get forward momentum, just to get going? And Satan can work in every possible way. And here he is, right 
in this heavenly vision, ready to accuse Joshua of every wrong thing he'd done in his life. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? This man plucked out of the fire. Joshua. God can restore us and take us from certain death. And select us and choose us. Do you know that God has an election and that your election is sure we don't elect him he elects us the fact that you're here is because you're called and chosen by him he called you and he chose you and you listened and you responded make sure your election and calling is certain Make sure, because God has a purpose. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Was Joshua pure? Was Joshua perfectly righteous? How could he be with filthy garments? Why would God bring him before him? Because he knew his heart. Because he knew the work that Joshua wanted to accomplish for him. God is looking for workers. God is looking for faithful people. God wants you in whatever condition you are. Whatever condition you happen to be in. So he can make you clean. So he can make you ready for the work. And so you can take on the work. Joshua had demonstrated that he loved the Lord. Do you love God? That's what it takes. Do you want to build his temple? Do you want to make his house greater and greater? Because if you do, he will restore you. He will rebuke Satan in your life. He will provide you with clean, white, new garment. That's our God. It's all on Him. We just have to have the desire and take the steps. He'll carry us the rest of the way. He'll carry us over the parts where we couldn't carry ourselves. God will deliver us. He will provide the difference the extra measure, the strength that is required in our lives. So, then in verse 5, let them set a fair miter upon his head. So they set a fair miter upon his head and clothed him with garments and the angel of the Lord stood by. And then he tells Joshua, the high priest, in verse 8, Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at, for behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch, speaking of Jesus. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving there, of saith the Lord of hosts. And I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In one day, God will remove the sin and the iniquity in the land of Israel. In one day, through this stone with seven eyes. What stone could that be? That very stumbling block that was put forth before Israel. That stone, that is the cornerstone, that is Jesus Christ. 